All right, let's talk motors. I got the new motors, I put them on. I did a test with a nice fat take-up reel at a very low speed, trying to get approximate like a um, one to two frames a second scenario. And it doesn't work. Because my amateur brain did not understand how constant current works with motors. What we want is constant torque at any speed. And that torque is related to current. So the amps going to the motor. And I'm adjusting with PWM, pulse width modulation, I'm adjusting essentially the voltage for being very simplistic. So we would expect it at low speeds to work. We should, you know, have low voltage, meaning low speed, but full torque, meaning constant current. Turns out that that doesn't work with brushless motors. At least that's what I've read. If I'm wrong, please correct me. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, at low speeds, we want more torque. I don't have it. So I guess we have to add some gears. And then that started to get complicated and expensive. And I thought, I don't want to do that. And then I started having problems again with these hubs and connections that I didn't know what was going wrong. And I just was like, this sucks. I'm going to rip it all out and make the dumbest, simplest version of what I need. So let's start with motors. I have a brushless motor that also has gears, but I thought it's too tiny. It couldn't possibly work. That's a fully loaded take-up reel. There's real film in there. You can't see it. I'll, I'll flip it around here in a second. And I'm going very slow. And it works just fine. This is even cheaper than the other motors. It's smaller. It's lighter. It's all those things. It, it's a worm gear motor, so I've got lots of torque in there. And it just kind of works. Second issue was I kept having troubleshooting issues with these tension hubs down here. These guys that measure how much tension is in the film path and feeds that back to the motors and all that good stuff. Was it my PCBs? Maybe. Was it my power supply? Maybe. Was it the motors? Maybe. Was it the drivers? Maybe. And it was just this constant like chasing my own tail trying to figure out why something wasn't working. So basically that happened at the same time that the motor thing happened when I realized that that wasn't working. And I just, okay, I was listening to a lot of Rage Against the Machine at the time and I decided I hate all of this and I don't wanna use any of it anymore. <laughs> and I thought I'm giving myself one night to try to get this to work in a totally new way with the simplest, dumbest possible approach. So that included, the first step was seeing if that motor could pull, and it does. And the second part was addressing the feed reel. The whole point of this, the tension hub on this side is to give us some, for, this is a very technical term, some pullback, right? To give it the tension. As this thing is pulling up, we want it to pull backwards and tighten the film. Do we really need a motor to do that? I mean, it might be nice for rewind so that we don't have to take stuff off and switch it around, but that's kind of a, I don't know, luxury problem? Call me crazy. So you, some of you may remember the tension, what did I call it? The friction pulley that we tested a few videos back. I thought, why don't I just do that on the feed side? So I did and it works. Let me show you what's going on here. So as this, as this is turning, so how is this thing working? As this axle is turning, it is spinning, as you can see, this pulley. It's a toothed pulley. It's one that you would use with this belt, but I flipped the belt. 
So it's just the flat, smooth side against there. So that is what's causing the friction. That's like me putting my hand on this, basically. That is going down to another identical pulley down here, and that is not moving. It's just a screw or a bolt locked in with a bunch of nuts for right now for spacing. And so basically what we have is a really tight loop, and this is rotating and causing some friction inside of that loop. I'll see if I can get you a close up here. And down here. So that stuff's just not moving. Now it's not adjustable, but I think we could make it adjustable. What I'm looking for is some feedback. Oh, by the way, if you wanna see what's going on over here, look how smooth that is. And the, in fact, this is working better than it's ever worked before. Especially like when I stop it, the reels stop too. I mean, that's the really nice part about it because there's some constant friction on this side. Uh, you can see at the gate that it's going pretty slow. It's not quite two frames a second. I can even make it slower. I've got this hooked up to a potentiometer, I think. Do I? No, I don't. But I have tested it slower. And it just, it just works. Okay. So here are, here's my argument for this. These are the, the pros and cons, if you will, for this approach. With the old approach, with two hubs, I'm gonna call this the smart system. The smart system allows for uh, feedback in the system if you wanted to know exactly what level of tension you had from zero to max, you could have that information. And it also had uh, limit switches so that if the film broke or ran out, the system would stop immediately. Uh, it was also electronically adjustable tension. So you could change the target number on these hubs at what angle they should be at, and that would change the tension with just a push of a button or an interface or something like that. And those are really good advantages. I have nothing against those advantages. Except that it adds a bunch of complexity. We've got PCBs, we've got a whole bunch of extra parts. Um, there's more points of failure, basically, and it's harder to troubleshoot. The code is more complex. It makes it, in my opinion, less hackable. It's still totally hackable in the sense that it's all published and that you can, it's documented and you can go in there and do it. I just mean less hackable for dummies like me <laughs> who want to go in there and hack it, but would be scared off. I'm going to say scared off because I would be scared off. So I'm not putting that on anybody else at PID loops and PCBs and all of that stuff. I'd actually still be okay with all of that if it just worked so much better than this. I think it would be to our advantage. Here's my counter argument. This is dumb as rocks simple. It can be adjustable manually, which I don't think is a big issue because why do you need it to be electronically adjustable? You need to adjust it once in the, the run of a film, and then it's pretty much gonna stay that way. So as long as I can guarantee that it's adjustable and it'll stay that way, whatever you set it at is gonna stick, I don't see the problem there. And then when it comes to limit switches and turning the machine off, there's definitely ways that we can institute that. Um, it could be as simple as a little encoder on one of the reels. Um, it could be a sensor somewhere, really dirt cheap, proximity sensor. Uh, there's so many different ways that we could do that and it doesn't have to be involved with a hub. Here is where I tempt you with the possibilities of this simple thing in an effort to bribe you into <laughs> telling me that this is a good idea. What you're looking at here, all of these black rollers are the original film path with the hubs. So these two hubs are always required, these two rollers are always required for a hub. But in order to thread that hub, we need one on each side. Then, because of the side that the film comes out on this roller, I've gotta switch it up before I get to the plate and exactly the mirrored on the other one. Point being, there's a whole bunch of rollers. And basically all of our film path is taken up with rollers. As you can see though, 
I use so many less rollers with this. In fact, I don't use any, all of these rollers are gone and all of these rollers are gone. So what could you put there? You could put two PTR rollers on this side and clean your film or a wet gate or on this side, you could put a sound head or we could loop it up here, I suppose, or you could do a whole bunch of things. But the point is that now we have all this extra space. Theoretically, we could move where these are located, put them higher, whatever, and then we have even more space if you wanna get really complicated. Whereas right now, if you wanted to put a, a, a sound head or a cleaning section or a wet gate, there's no room. So possible advantage there. So I don't know, what do you think? Tell me what you think of the motor. I think it works. Uh, it does go to high speeds. Um, I suppose I could show you that right now, hold on. All right, this is at 10 volts, so we're not even using the full 12. I'm gonna ramp up from zero. Got a nice slow speed, no problem. I'll show you how fast we can get. Oops. Kind of hard to tell without the light, but that's at 10 volts. I can pump this up to 12 volts, which is its uh, recommended voltage. There we go, there's 12 volts. And we are definitely moving along here. So am I crazy? for thinking that this is a good approach. If you were gonna use this every day, what would annoy you about this? Um, what would you need to have in order for it to be okay? And does that require the hubs is the real question. Is there another way to do this um, that gives us everything that would make it usable and practical? I like where this is headed. It's so much cheaper it's so much simpler, it's so much more hackable. But I'm biased towards those things and I may be missing a key usability functionality part of this puzzle. So I need your brains, thanks.